The next day, I'm off to the old town of Pitigliano, and Alessandro lends me his Vespa. Now, the town of Pitigliano is this old, gorgeous town, and it looks like a postcard. It's perched on a hill. As I ride up, I stop off at Il Grottino. It's a small restaurant overlooking the town. Now, Chef Raimondo is a Neapolitan living in Pitigliano. He's animated, he talks with his hands. Everyone loves Raymond. <laughs> Chef Raymond wants to do a little bit of Neapolitan Tuscan fusion. Okay, so we're gonna make aqua cotta, which is really cooked water, and it's a typical dish that's eaten in Tuscany, but really all over Italy. And really, aqua cotta was the poor man's soup. It's a soup. It's a soup, but for the poor. Povero. It was a poor man's dish. I mean, it was cooked water, and really, you put in whatever you could find. I mean, literally, whatever vegetables you had lying around, you just boiled water and you cooked those vegetables. But what we're going to do is fancy it up by adding an egg and a little bit of toasted bread. Okay. Chop up carrots and in. Chicory. Cabbage. And right in. And onion. La gente che va a fare acqua guarda i preparati settimana prima, i mesi prima. Povera gente. He says some restaurants make such a big deal about aqua cotta. It's become a trendy dish now. They start making it weeks before. He said, no, you do it on the spot with whatever vegetables and ingredients you have on hand. So the water has come to a boil. I added a little bit of salt and some extra virgin olive oil, and then I dropped in a few eggs just to give it more flavor. So now, Raymond, you're going to make ipicci. So, Raymond, you put a little bit of olive oil, garlic, and pepperoncino, or hot chilies. Yeah, pepperoncino, mi piace. Posso mettere altre due? Come no? I love pepperoncino. But depends on the consistency, we say that one wants to piace it for me. It's a little bit Now, a little bit of passata or tomato puree. La mozzarella. La mozzarella, fresh cut mozzarella. Being from Napoli, it's like music is in the blood, it's in the soul. So all of a sudden, Raymond starts singing. And in Tuscany, over a beautiful view of Pitigliano, cooking a Neapolitan sauce with Tuscan peachy, and he starts singing. It's like a Fellini film. So we're just finishing to cook the peachy in the sauce. And lots of uh, sugo to do a little scarpetta, right? Mm. And a little bit of pecorino. To basilico e di napoli. It's always the basil that elevates it with nice freshness. Uh. Look at that simple Tuscan peachy with a Neapolitan sauce of tomatoes and mozzarella. Okay, okay. So now toasted bread. Look at that egg. Guardalo, guardalo, guardalo. And a bit of broth. And now, some olive oil. And look at that, a typical Tuscan aqua cotta dish, cooked water with some eggs and vegetables. Start with the peachy. The tomato sauce was so creamy with that buffalo mozzarella. And the scent of basil was just incredible. And then in the end, I had to mop up all that sauce. I mean, sauce with buffalo mozzarella, you can't leave it behind. You gotta mop it all up and make sure that you do that scarpetta. The plates have to be so clean, they don't even have to be washed. After we had the aqua cotta, and just seeing the cooked egg on that toasted bread with vegetables, it was rustic cooking. Really simple, but flavorful. I want a restaurant like Ramonda. You know, we're talking 20 seats, terrace overlooking Pitigliano. He's got his grandson serving. And really, it's a family business. It's all about cooking and doing what you love. It's about passion.
head into Old Pitigliano and meet up with Chef Domenico. His restaurant's called Il Tufo Allegro, which loosely translates to The Happy Rock. Chef Domenico's a local, and he wants to give me an insider's view on the town of Pitigliano. Our first stop is the butcher shop, and he wants me to try the local sausage and salami. We start talking food and food history and really the influence of the Jews on the food here in Pitigliano. Uh, we end up buying some lamb and we're gonna make bouillon Daniello, which is a, a typical Jewish dish which dates back to the 1500s. And uh, you know, it's kind of exciting to be here. It gives me a different perspective on Italian life. And what's interesting is the people here in Pitigliano are really proud of their Jewish history and are determined to preserve it. We stop off at the local Enoteca or wine bar to try some local cheese and wine. Grazie. And this place is called Pane Cacciua, which means bread, cheese, and wine. And that's all they serve. And Domenico wanted me to try their Pitigliano white and uh, also their local pecorino, the sheep's milk cheese. Yeah, it was fantastic. And that's what it's all about, getting that insider scoop on places to go and uh, things to do. Back in Domenico's restaurant, we make a local dish, bouillone, lamb stew. In such a typical Tuscan style, this uh, bouillon Daniello utilizes inferior cuts of meat, the shoulder, the neck, you know, tough bits, meat that's perfect for being slow cooked in uh, water or in our case, some wine. And that's gonna tenderize the meat and make it so much more delicious. Mettiamo un po' di olio di oliva. Sì. So whole garlic, you don't have to crush it or remove the peel. The uh, smell of Tuscany right here, il profumo della Toscana, butti. Esatto. Il nostro fondo. We're searing it so it forms a nice crust and all that flavor is getting locked in. And that's what you want, a nice crust like that. The reason why we left the garlic with its skin on, because with this high heat, you don't want it to burn. The skin will protect it. We just added a little bit of vinegar. Back in the day, sometimes lamb had a gamey smell, and a little bit of white wine vinegar removes that kind of harsh lamb smell. A little bit of white wine, and that's gonna deglaze the pan, really capturing all those bits of fat that are stuck on the bottom of the pan. And the smell from this white wine can warm, right? Eh? At this point, some salt, then some black pepper, and some red chili flakes for that picante. A little bit of vegetable broth. So we're gonna reduce it and we're gonna cook the lamb for about a half hour on the low heat. Molto, slow, molto, slow lent cook. Molto, molto lentamente. Molto lentamente. Molto lentamente. Molto slow. Very slow. Very slow. So at this point, the lamb is about halfway cooked and we're gonna add four or five tablespoons of tomato paste. And now it's gonna continue to slow cook for another 30 minutes at basto fatto. Fatto. We've just put some bread at the bottom of these plates and now the lamb and all the bouillon is gonna get on top of the bread and that's gonna help absorb some of that fantastic, delicious flavor. <laughs> Domenico and I eat his lamb stew or bouillon right on his two-table terrace. Now the homes in Pitigliano are kind of stacked on top of each other. Across the alley is his neighbor. She yells out her bouillon is probably better than his. I guess that's what happens when people live so close to each other. This slow-cooked lamb, Bouillone Daniela, was out of this world. When you add wine and vegetable broth and then tomato paste and you slow cook it for an hour and a half, you're gonna get lots of intense flavors. They've been making this dish here in Pitigliano for a thousand years. It was a dish the Jews and the locals used to eat, and to this day, it's something that has not been messed with. It's still cooked in the traditional way, and it's still loved by everyone. My last stop on my Pitigliano tour is a dinner party at Anna Maria's, a friend of Domenico's. With the backdrop of Pitigliano, Anna Maria and I make a simple vegetarian dish black rice and vegetables. Are you a vegetarian? I'm vegetarian. You're vegetarian, okay. Not so much. So much vegetarian. Once in a while you'll eat meat. <laughs> You're quasi-vegetarian. Exactly. <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm okay. always trying to do something in life. 
<laughs> so we're going to put uh, some oil in the pan. Okay. So this is how you make your risotto. You add in all your raw vegetables with some oil. Yeah. Okay, so we'll put this here. We put some salt. Some salt. Yeah, and then we're going to cut this. Celery. Mm, exactly. So we're only going to use the ends. So all our celery goes in. Yes. Onion, celery, olive oil, what else? Salad. Salad. So I've never had salad in my risotto. So usually you eat a salad uh, fresh. Exactly. Uh, not cooked. Okay. Yeah. Apri. Okay, so everything goes in. This is important because you think you have a big pot of vegetables, but once it cooks, it reduces and you're left with very little. Exactly. So put in a little more. It's only salad. Okay. When you make a risotto, you need a vegetable broth or some sort of stock to uh, help cook the risotto. But Anna Maria did a really simple technique. She had water and she heated it up and she put a pinch of saffron and just a pinch gave the flavor and color to the water. Now you're gonna put in the black rice just when the vegetables are starting to wilt. And this more or less tastes like regular rice but has a little more bite to it. So I'll mix it up a bit. And the smell that is coming from this yeah, is unbelievable. So, broth in here? Yeah. We need the water to cook the rice. So, if we need more, we're going to put okay. the after. You know what? This looks like one of those hearty rice soups my grandmother would make. So, this is going to cook for about 20 minutes. We'll check on it every so often. If we have to put more water with saffron, we add it. Basta. Simple. <laughs> I've never had risotto this way, literally cutting up fresh onions, celery, and lettuce, and then letting them kind of steam, throwing the rice in, and then all the water, and then just stirring every so often, letting it really cook for about 20 minutes. I'm at Ana Maria's house, who is a friend of Domenico, who's a friend of Erica and Alessandro. It seems like everyone in Pitilla don't know each other. It's like one degree of separation. So, 